Hi, my name is Ian Curley from the European in Melbourne. Welcome to ChefMasterclasses.com. Today, I'm going to be cooking for you a kingfish and mussel escabish with smoked eel brandard, cooked together with some saffron and olive oil. I've got some mashed potato, sliced shallots, sliced fennel, the whole Dutch baby carrots, which we'll slice to turn into our escabish. You've got some smoked eel, which is probably might not be readily available, but you can substitute this for smoked salmon. You've got saffron, so that you can get from your Mediterranean uh, importer. Uh, a muscatel vinegar that you can replace for a sherry vinegar, which is, uh, but you just want that tang. It's a, a very traditional Spanish dish, the escabish. Tomatoes, which have been drained and sliced, and chopped herbs. Moving along, obviously, your salt and pepper, which you, you can't have a recipe without. Dried chili flakes, which you'll get from your, your Mediterranean importer again. Um, they just give you that extra little bit of punch. I actually quite like sprinkling that right at the end, so you just get that little afterburn. And to cook the oysters and mussels, and to like, have that fishy type of emulsion that you're gonna see, um, I use saffron, the bay leaf, thyme, garlic, and, and then to finish, we're gonna cook the oysters, mussels, off with the uh, onion, celery, and carrots. And just give it like a, as if you would a more marinier, if you, if you can imagine that. So it's basically a, a roasted fish on a carrot, oyster, and mussel stew, flavored with saffron. You can buy oysters open because if people get daunted by it, it's not really that difficult. All you do is find the opening down at the back of the shell and just pop it open. When I'm opening the oyster, I am very cautious, but right in there is the actual hinge. It's the hinge between two, two shells. If you, if you imagine it's like that, you want to open it up and then it'll just pop itself off. You can get all that juice in, all that juice will be flavour. For the mussels, I'm going to add my onions, carrots, celery, thyme, garlic, and we're going to just add the saffron and the bay leaf, just to give the mussels a bit of flavour and a bit of colour afterwards, because we want to actually use the mussel stock afterwards to finish the sauce. Once that's cooked, We'll use the mussels and then to finish the dish we have the smoked eel brandard which is smoked eel which is mixed with the mashed potato like so. We'll add the herbs which we'll mix through and then around the outside we're going to serve what's known in Spain and all over the world as an escabiche or an escabeche as, as they say which is your sliced carrots, shallots and we'll, we're going to add some fennel, some saffron and tomato right here. It's, it's a nice, really summery dish. That does, it doesn't come off our menu at all at the European. It's, uh, it stays on there forever because it, it's a lot of good flavours and it's, it blends itself really well to wine. It's got a really good chardonnay with this. It's fantastic. So with the Dutch carrots, what I'm going to do with it, just very simply, just slice them. Now, you want them to be quite fine because you're going to want to cook these quite quickly. If you don't like the brown bits on the end, to take them off, but that's just where they've been peeled. And then with the carrots, just put them into a little dish. And then when we make our rest of dish, you've got everything there. And then they're all in nice little containers, so it's a lot easier to grab it, pick it all up, put it into the pan once you've got it all there. This is a personal favourite of mine. Obviously, you can use blue eye or any nice firm flesh white fish. You know, to a certain degree, some like Trevally along those lines, as long as it's fresh. Uh, good flounders, also good. But you know, and snapper, anything, think anything with kingfish, anything with snapper, perfect. Now, there is no point in you yourself going out and fish and trying to bone a whole piece of fish, no matter how good you are, the fishmonger is always going to be able to do it better than you. If you can get him to split it in front of you and you get the two fillets, or get him to cut the fillets in front of you, you'll find that the fish is a whole lot fresher. Um, best to buy, ask them to fill up the fish in front of you at the fishmongers and you'll find a whole lot easier. Um, with the fish itself, I tend to trim the tail off, just that piece, and I look at round about what I would prefer to, to see as a portion. People weigh it along those lines. What I would like to see is what I would be happy to eat as a portion of fish, and that's where we go from there. Because you are going to get varying sizes of the fish. 
So if what I do, I cut straight down, and that'll be one portion, which I'll cut like that, and my second portion there. And what I do is I tend to, when I get the bone here, I'm gonna go along the side of the bone, like that, because I don't want to be serving my customers the bone. So I like that, and again, I'll get two portions out of that. So all in all, you're gonna get four and a half, maybe five portions of fish. So five, from there. Again, we can keep that. We'll, add, we'll throw that in with our mussels to give that the mussels some flavor when we're cooking it. But we'll cut that, and we'll use that for something else, either be it a marinara or something along those lines later. But for me to cook, and I just want to score the outside of the skin there. And this will help it cook evenly, so that the oil can penetrate that and keep it everything nice and even. And also it stops the, the fish from curling up. And they're ready now for cooking. And what we'll do, I want to sprinkle a little bit of oil on those. And that essentially helps the fish get a little bit more flavour before it hits the pan. Be quite liberal with it. Let's massage that in. So when we cook it, you get the good, really beautiful taste of the extra virgin olive oil. The first thing I'm going to add in is the carrot. I'm going to add the finely sliced shallots. A little bit of thyme leaves. I want to add a little splash of white wine. I'm going to pour in our vinegar. So the vinegar, because it's going in cold, I'm going to put that in there now. So I've just sprinkled it in the saffron. So all the flavours of the saffron will come out because that mixture is now cold. So I'm going to stir that through and you'll see that it's going to get that beautiful yellow colouring that's good with saffron. So adding the wine and letting that cook. So that'll cook itself out. And then when that's cooked out, we add the extra virgin olive oil. And in the bowl, I'm going to pour my escabiche. And the saffron's in the bottom of this. I've got some more saffron in there. Just a little bit of pinch of saffron. Or you can use the chili flakes that we talked about earlier. You only have to serve this bit warm to get all the flavours. And that's your basic escabiche. In there, we have the mussels, the carrot, celery, garlic, the thyme, and a little bit of bay, bay leaf. Get your pan nice and hot. Your olive oil is nice and hot. You throw that in. And then a little bit of white wine. You just cover them over for a second. So we move this along. And you see the mussels are nice and open. As you can see, you don't want them too wide open because got, we want them actually still to be quite moist. And I'm gonna pour that in there like that. And we'll just let them go cold before we pick them. But there's my mussel stock that I'm gonna use when I finish the dish later on to give it a little bit more punchy flavor. To reheat the brandard in the pan, we drop some butter and a mix of mashed potato, some smoked eel and some herbs. Now all I wanna do is basically reheat this. Through. I don't wanna cook it out too much more and it'll form itself into a nice little ball. I'm a big fan of non-stick pans, and I like these particular ones because they actually help with the keeping of the fish skin, making it all nice and crispy. So you kingfish in there, the fat of the skin will make it nice and crispy if I press it, and it'll stop the fish from bending. That's why I did the insertion before. Season the fish again with a bit more salt. A bit more oil. And just make sure that the fish is not cooking over quickly, so you don't want to see any, any real smoke firing up out of there. It looks to, like the top of the fish is getting cooked, and around there. That's a good sign that it's, cook, it's cooking all nicely. And the fish, you can see, you can turn it over. Getting a nice little golden brown tinge around the outside. 
We're going to take that fish out now. I want to throw in the fennel into the pan. We'll add the mussel stock that came from the mussels that we had before. We add that through. Add my escabish. You get plenty in there. Once it comes to the boil, I want to just turn that down because I don't want that to be boiling away too hard. I'm going to throw in my mussels. And I'm going to pour in the oyster juice that I had from the oysters. Now don't be particularly too worried if there's a bit of shell in there. And then just drop your oysters in. And just set them along the top there. Now with this I want a nice sweet and sour, if you like, carrot, fennel jam that goes around the outside of my fish. And after to finish that I'm just going to put the fish back in that little, in, the, in there. And that will carry on cooking. So you want to get all those flavours back into there. Now, a little bit of salt. That's just a bit of chopped herbs or chopped shervil there. Right, you can use any herb, you know, as long as it's a soft herb, not something like rosemary. I'm going to put the brandard in the bottom of the plate there. My escabiche mix and pour it straight on top of the brandard because I actually want this all to sit pretty much in the middle. Get a bit of the juice, make sure you've got at least a couple of oysters and a couple of mussels in for each person that you got there. So nice bright colours, tomatoes. So what we'll do is we'll put a piece of the fish there, like so. A little bit more juice, you don't want to waste it. On the outside. And you can, fin you can finish this with any herb you like. Just to be a bit fancy, but just throw it around the outside. Sprinkle a bit more salt. And then, as I was saying before about the chilli flakes, just sprinkle a bit of the chilli flakes on there. It gives it an interesting texture. And there's the roasted kingfish with oysters, mussel, carrot, escabish. Stuart, you're the expert. Ian. Can you tell me what sort of wine you'd match with this? Well, I remember when you started prepping this up earlier, I said, what are the dominant flavours yep. in the dish? And you told me some, there's some wonderful smokiness from the yep. eel and a, a lovely, um, almost tart, acidic, acidic cut through from the various yep. vinegars that you yep. used. And at the end of the day, I actually thought, well, this is going to be a fairly powerfully uh, flavour defined dish. Yep. Correct, yeah. Yep. So, you know, anything that is a lighter style of white wine or a lighter style of anything will just be completely knocked for six by this dish. That's so right. that leads me directly to say a really fantastic Chardonnay. Okay, yep. I mean, you basically um, chefed with this today, yeah, which I was right. really I happy with. It. I enjoyed it. I thought it was fantastic. Well, I thought it was a nice fit. Mm, yeah. South Australian kingfish. Yep. Brilliant, cool climate South Australian yep. Chardonnay from yep. two years bottle age on it, which is just brilliant. Yep. Um, let's have a look. I think we should. Be rude not to. Be rude not to. Now I'm a big fan of actually drinking the food, the wine that I cook with my food because I know a lot of people like, pretend that they only serve the rubbish wines to cook with. I actually prefer getting better wines to cook with as Ab well so I can drink them. Absolutely. I mean there's a saying that, you know, why would you chef with a wine that you're not basically appreciating or going to drink later on? Absolutely. Well, that's but I fantastic. Think it's great clarity of colour. Uh, it's got two years bottle age on it. It has this wonderful sort of nectarine and cashew yeah. overtones, which beautifully balance all the complexity of your dish. Well, it's going to be fantastic there with saffron as well. Can, can I have a? Fish for, can I dig in? No, please. Well, you you eat that while I drink this. <laughs> I feel a whole lot better then. Cheers.